startup pitch is back, and so is the stellar cast of judges that will determine this year's winner. David Meltzer David Meltzer Enterprises Founder In his early 20s, David Meltzer quickly rose to the top of his game in the business world, becoming a millionaire. David lectured around the globe and saw rapid success in every business project he touched. But something was missing, and in his 30s, as a multi-millionaire, he went on a rapid downward spiral that ended in bankruptcy. It was only then that David realized that in order to revive and thrive, he needs to codify what made him successful in the first place. He has since emerged to realize even more rewarding heights of success in business and life. Joe Pisano, Jade Group of Companies, Founder and CEO. Joe is the founder and CEO of Jade Entertainment and Gaming Technologies, which was founded in the Philippines in 2009 and is now a Pan-Asia supplier of gaming technology and service provider. Joe was the former International Project Manager for Automatic Totalizers Limited, Director of Business Development for Asia Pacific of IGT and Executive Director and Senior Vice President of Entertainment Gaming Asia. Joe's gaming experience includes systems, slots, lotteries, sports betting, fantasy skill games and totalizators. Eoin Kirvan Iconic Group Founding Partner Eoin Kirvan is the founding partner of Iconic Group, a venture studio that is focused on building projects within the fintech, gaming and media industry. He possesses deep expertise ranges from product development, fundraising and programmatic advertising. He leverages a holistic problem-solving approach to identify and captivate promising new ventures at speed. Igor Samardzitsky Nexus Gaming Intelligence Founder Igor is an investor and founder of Nexus Tech, an iGaming software and data consultancy firm. Serving as a CEO of multiple online casino brands, a serial entrepreneur and technology expert, Igor sits on the board of several prominent firms within the industry. Author of numerous papers on revenue efficiency and player behavior profiling, he is the founder and course director of highly successful online gaming masterclasses designed for C-level executives and founders of online gaming operations. Good luck to all the participants and let the startup pitch begin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we have our lovely cast of judges. Let's hear a round of applause for them, please. More enthusiasm, of course. <laughs> so Igor couldn't make it today, so um, uh, he did send his regards, though. Um, I would like to run through the rules of this startup pitch. So especially for the pitchers, pitches have a three-minute timeline, okay? So I'm sure you're ready for it. I will stop you on three minutes on the dot. Reason why? Principle. So. Also, after your pitch is the time to be asked some questions. So the judges get to ask questions for four minutes, and the same rule applies to them. At four minutes on the dot, I will stop the questions. Again, why am I doing this? Principle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome, first on stage, Baccarat Limited. I was the country manager of Operator in 2022. At that time, my boss was asking three questions constantly. Is it unique? Is it easy for afraid to promote? Is it sticking with the younger generation? To solve these challenges, we Barikata create new game as game provider. Here is our solution. In Barikata, animated streamers known as VTuber host live casino games. These VTubers can be customized for each casino. In addition, uh, can be acted by the human or chat GPT, AI casino dealer. And also that we create our own unique uh, table game, Bacala Roulette in-house. Then player can play with them. Is it unique? Yes, it is. Casino operator can make own unique world with the customized character. Over time, Barikata helps attract VIPs, enhancing the overall experience and value for the casino operators. Is it easy for affiliate to promote? 
Yes, it is. Barikata manages VTubers, and VTuber has X accounts. And also, we have the fan community on Discord. Then we can promote the casino operator using the such X and Discord to bring new players. This is our media mix strategy. Is it sticking the younger generation? Yes, it is. According to a lot of the article, this virtual market could grow up rapidly, one time, uh, 102 times in the future, especially in younger generation. Then it is no doubt coming new big wave of VTuber to casino industry as well. So we launched Barricata with the one casino in November 2022, uh, November 2023. Uh, currently, Barricata has been successfully integrated into six casino. We have established a strategic partnership with Lake Tech, listed on the STO for AI development things. And also, our revenue is increasing day by day because of the Vujima market as well. We not only focus on the Asian market, but also the rest of the world. In the anime industry is very popular in many countries. We believe we can localize and scale to the each country. Barikata uh, changed the live casino experience at all. Thank you for listening. Thank you very, very much. This was Barikata Limited. So, judges, are we ready to ask our questions? Are we curious enough? Do we, do we know what we want to talk about? Are we ready? I, I, will give, I will give the mic on to David. He seems very eager to start off. Do we have a timer? Do we have a four minute timer? I see a, I see a thumbs up. Let's go. But I loved how organized your pitch was but you skipped over really quickly the revenue. You had six casinos on board, great strategic partners. Can you talk through the revenue? Uh, do you want a revenue, the amount of the revenue? Today. Right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I have the energy every casino operator, but let's say the one casino, uh, for now, uh, over the uh, 100,000 this year for the casino operator. But we got the revenue share, only the seven percent, and then so it's the one hundred thousand uh, euro by the seven percent for the our revenue right now. With, with the um, you, you're taking a YouTuber and converting it into enemy. Yeah, exactly. And then you apply that to the game. Do you only apply it to your own game, or can you apply that enemy character to anyone's games? Uh, so, for my understanding, what uh, you want to ask me, that we are using the uh, part-time job the streamer or something, right? So, yes, it is. The, right now, we are using the part-time job streamers. Uh, we have the nine streamers so far, and uh, half people is the animated character, the half people is the real person. And then they can, uh, they can shoot the every streaming things in even the house or the studio, uh, depends, on, depends on the him or herself. But is it, is it your own games or the, can they choose any game in the library? Yeah. From, from different yeah, game exactly. providers? Right, exactly. So our game is RNG based. So it's uh, not affect uh, from the streamer things. So they can uh, uh, they can provide even uh, their house. Uh, it's no problem because of that. This is RNG based hybrid between uh, RNG based and uh, streamer things. That's why. I'm coming to the rescue. Thank you, my friends. Maybe it's me and David, but we didn't catch what you need. What is your ask? Uh, sorry? Uh, what is your ask? ask? Ask means, so sorry, I don't understand the ask meaning. Uh, what are you asking for? Yeah, what are you asking for? Uh, I mean, this is a pitch fest, right? What are you asking for? Uh, so, you, so it's the directly answer I'm not sure, but 
if I if I must say, I I would like to ask the uh, I uh, casino operators uh, can be uh, can be make the, their original unique world with these anime characters, and then we would like to offer to the uh, making the anime character things as well. So uh, currently we offer to make such an anime uh, live 2D things, uh, design things as well. So I just want to ask a question around the Oshi fan culture mm -hmm. is really where you're starting with the intellectual property today. But the mechanism of taking a virtual uh, kind of a YouTuber or a v streamer, yeah, exactly. can that extend to other IP into the future rather than just Oshi? Yeah, so technology things that came from I the I am future. so sorry. Oh. I am so sorry. Oh, and it had to be your question. Last <laughs> minute. But you know what? We, we, my, my microphone is playing games on me. This is the beauty of life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm very sorry. O Owen's question just happened to, to be, to be off, off time. But um, we'll start off with you, Owen. I would like to thank you very much for, for pitching thank you your idea. Much. Thank you very much. Baccarati Limited, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize again. Barricata Limited. Our next pitch on stage is Tech Pinion. Hi, good afternoon everyone, uh, to the panel, and to everyone present here. Uh, I'm, Rep I'm Karthik, I represent TechPinion, and uh, we are an uh, iGaming uh, development team, and we provide platform, platform where you can add all third parties, and we have a, uh, you know, overall a platform. And we started our journey as, uh, uh, from our fantasy sports. We started creating fantasy sports, and then casino, sports betting, and all of these followed. Currently, uh, uh, we, start, we, we started two years ago, but we have a relevant uh, iGaming experience of about uh, uh, 10 years. And a team of about 20 people. And uh, that's how we are. Um, I, I'll just start with, we, we founded the team, so three, all, of, all three founders are right here, present here. And uh, um, we, we want to start directly with the gaming platform, since we only have three minutes. <laughs> I'll get started with the product, so iGaming platform. So this iGaming platform is a very powerful framework that we have created uh, using some powerful tech stacks like Node, uh, React, and Laravel. And it's all customizable. That's how it is. Uh, and it, 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 we co it comes with the full ownership. So we give a full ownership of our product to our uh, clients. This is, this is fully scalable because we have a very strong DevOps team who takes care of all of these things. <coughs> Basically, uh, the, there are three layers to this. The first layer is our major platform, which has 12 uh, features. Then comes the third party, where in any client who has uh, their own uh, team or they have, they have their own contracts, they can come to us, and we can add them to our iGaming platform, and pretty simply. And the last one is our DevOps, which, in, in, uh, which includes the security, as well as all the, uh, uh, the features to make our, uh, our, our things strong. And the final product is the sweepstakes, and uh, that the sweepstakes casino, normal casinos, and all of these that we create using all of these. Along with that, we also provide uh, software development services. So we have a team who are expert, uh, we are expert team of uh, iGaming. So we are aware about all of these, and we have a team which provides integration services and bespoke. So we are uh, something customizable. Uh, everybody, uh, any any of our client comes to us comes with a complete customized thing. So we, we give the platform, but we give them an opportunity to either create themselves or we can help them out in doing that. Um, if I say, uh, I'll not go into too much of details for this, but our major thing uh, here is to make that our, our product is very usable by our clients. The clients love it, the users love it. Our clients like getting the, uh, uh, you can say the revenues from it and making our team happy. So overall, this is, the, the, the thing that we have in our mind and our vision. So thank you for these three minutes for presenting. And thank you for respecting them. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so, the judges now. Do we have four minutes on the clock? Amazing. Owen, go for it. Okay, thank you for the pitch, guys. All right. yeah, yeah. Back again. 
Um, thank you for the pitch, guys. Um, thank really you. interesting platform. I like the fact that you're open sourcing the code, which means an operator can actually then develop on top of it. Yes. You mentioned it was React and Laravel. Is that correct? Yes. OK. And inside of this, you're going to have casino, sportsbook, aggregator, CMS, everything, the full suite? All right. So how it works is basically uh, an operator comes to us asking for a specific sweepstake. For example, they want to launch sweepstake. Now what we do is we pick up our platform. Uh, the base modules are already there. Then we customize. Then we do the third-party integrations. We add new bonuses, um, you know, some, some, something that needs to be done maybe in-house on the platform. And then uh, the DevOps team ensures that everything is functional, working properly before it goes live. And then we deploy it accordingly. So the platform acts as a root of a sweepstake in case one. However, in case two, it could be the base for uh, an online casino, a standard online casino. So you're essentially right. the entire back office for any yes. operator that needs that. Yes, the entire PAM for, for functioning. And your model is SaaS or RevShare or both? No. Yeah, no, it's not RevShare in our case. It's more of a SaaS. So after delivery also, we you know, prefer to be a part of this engagement with further customization, third-party additions, providing our staffing services, as Kyotic explained. So we do have additional services that backs on what we have provided to them. OK, very right. cool. Right. Very cool. So the, the code, the platform, and all the code, you're, you sell that? Yes. So, so it's a, a one-off sale, and then you have some recurring revenue from services? Absolutely. That's the whole idea. OK. And then, obviously, there are a lot of providers across the board. We do have partnerships. If an operator chooses to go with a specific third-party content provider, they're happy to do it. Otherwise, if they want us to help them, we have created our ecosystem of partners still working on it to bring on board, you know, maybe you guys can meet uh, for this guy for KYC. This one could help you for affiliates. This one could help you for, you know, new gaming content, something like that. Hmm. Does the platform provide compliance? Is that transferable? Yes, yes. We have uh, various third parties that, you know, like the, the, the our client, they can come to us with their third party and they can in, uh, do that. Otherwise, we have inbuilt KYC and all of these capabilities, ensuring that uh, if there is a uh, if there is a customer who is ready to take care of the paperwork and everything, then we can just give that. Otherwise, KYC we can add at any point of time. So I can buy your software and resell it. Absolutely, you can. OK, thanks. I mentioned, so, early, so what is your, I mentioned earlier to you that you basically have created a platform that can make anyone a platform, right? Yes. Great. So uh, you covered everything from CMS to KYC. How about variances in regulation? Do you have something that will cover for that? All right. Uh, if I'm getting your qu uh, questions properly, you're asking about the regulation that is required. So how it works? So it's compliant. Uh, the development has been compliant with GLI. We are still in process of getting a GLI process certification. The idea is obviously, you know, to get uh, the platform itself certified so the trust and the belief system is already there. You know, whenever we are talking to an operator. I have other questions, but I'll save them. You got 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> Give them a yes or no uh, question. We won't be on Twice able bitten, to one shot, nine yeah? seconds for sure. After, for That's sure. a longer one. Great job. Thank Thanks, you. guys. One's bitten, twice shy, yeah? <laughs> Thank you very, very much. This was TechPinion, ladies and gentlemen. So we're moving on to our next pitch. Please welcome on stage, Blask. Good afternoon. My name is Max Tesla. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Blask. And also, I'm a newcomer to the industry. We came up with the idea to create the Swiss Army knife for B2B iGaming analytics. And today, Blask is an AI-driven platform that changes how operators, platform providers, and affiliates see their markets. Our core metric, the Blask Index, similar to how Dow Jones gauges the US stock market, it benchmarks iGaming, giving a real-time overview of its competitive landscape. 
the BLASC index is en route to becoming the industry-defining metric across with the introduction of the relative market share feature that showing how operators, brands, share the market terrain in relation to others in the real time. And to keep our users informed about new entrants in their target markets, we have created the automated brand discovery system. It's capable of identifying casino and sportsbook operators over thousands of websites worldwide. And two state-of-the-art computer vision and natural language processing models work together in tandem to extract features from this waste pool of data. This helps our customers and partners to devise their strategy and maintain on a competitive edge. Well, by leveraging deep learning algorithms, we are capable of even calculating FTD and GGR values based on the open source data intelligence from worldwide gambling commissions and public companies' reports. This data is being fed into the proprietary AI model developed by Blask, and we use it to detect patterns, seasonality, and visualize market dynamics for countries and individual brands. Well, let's jump to market studies. Here we can see that Blask Index shows the impact of the Indian Premier League on the Indian market of iGaming for 2024. And the spikes represent the increased interest for operators on March days. And here we can see the option showing that you can just clusterize closest brands in a couple of clicks. Well, the roadmap ahead. We plan to add 100 countries by the end of the year, and future features will include sports data, affiliate database, games, game providers, and marketing mix. We are Blask, and we are not playing any one games. We are creating our own game. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. That was Blask's pitch. I would like to ask the judges, are we ready, or rather, ready. Owen, ready. are you ready to start? Ready to go. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I think my question to you really is around who is your core customer and how are they going to use this to benefit their organization? Well, actually we have a handful. Operators, affiliates, suppliers, like platform providers. But also we do not limit to any kind of customers because we are trying to shape the industry. And the thing is that we can partner with anyone becoming the data provider because we plan to have the comprehensive sport data, we plan to do affiliates discovery, and even beyond iGaming, we can use the technology we have created to track market for any kind of industry, be it automotive, sport drinks, insurance, wherever. So then to, to kind of qualify what you're saying is an operator is going to use your analytics and the dashboard to help them make better decisions on marketing and organization strategy overall. Brand management, brand management brand actually, management. and it's both good for tactical and strategical decisions. If you're an operator, you can compare Blask indexes for India and Brazil. If you want to go to Poland, you can give a short glance understanding of the total available market there based on Blask index, the predicted FTDs and GGRs. And also, you can use the information to analyze the outcome of the football match that was on Brazil from Friday to Saturday last week. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So you're, you're selling the ability to analyze the market? Yeah, we do analyze the market and we give an access to anyone to see this data and interact with this data. Do, do you also, let's say here in the Philippines, analyze the market in the Philippines and sell that data to interested parties? Yeah, yeah. We can do custom reports. We are ready for on-premise projects. We are ready for on-demand projects. And we have gathered Philippines right one day before Sigma started. So it's already on Blast. Okay. It seems a bit labor intensive to gather all the data that would give the correct indices in the application itself. 
how many people does it take in order to gather all that data, the agreements to get the data? Uh, well, we use the approach that called the OSINT and open source intelligence. We get data from lots of providers and we get data almost every three hours to keep it consistent. And we provide the Blask index granularity for our over our deep level. You can actually take a look, even for Philippines. It depends on the size of the brand. If the brand is big with a large footprint on the internet, we can get lots and lots of granular data for it. If the brand is small and existing less than half a year, well, it has not yet enough visibility. So that's it. And even we use this data to synthesize and calculate GGR and FTDs by feeding this to a deep learning model with what I've said during the pitch, with public companies data and gambling commissions data. Because we've used Blask Index to interpolate quarter over quarter data from public companies in terms of revenues, a new place to calculate FTDs and create the data set for the deep learning algorithm to be capable of doing this. This seems to be a kind of platform that um, even outside of uh, gambling uh, would find use cases. Uh, what industries do you think would benefit from this? Uh, the entire gambling and all other world. No, wow. outside of gambling. Is there, uh, do you that was see nice and sharp. Amor, I'm outside. so sorry. I'm it's so right. sorry, my dear. I'm going to have to stop you. But what a quick answer. You got it right on the gong. I must give a hand, please, for this gentleman over here. Good job. Okay. So that was Blask, everyone. We're moving on to our next pitch, Savage Tech. Welcome on stage. I think we are facing a huge challenge in this industry when we're talking about onboarding the next generation of hunters, Generation Y and Generation Z. 86% of that generation considers themselves gamers, and yet we don't have any products that cater specifically to them. For them, all of our sports books look like colored Excel sheets. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, we got accustomed to uh, high customer acquisition costs, and yet uh, we are willing to uh, lose up to 85% of them on the second non-incentivized deposit, which is not really sustainable. So what can we actually do to make betting more fun for the next generation? My name is Tom, and I've been working in the industry since 2007. Together with my co-founders Lucas and Florian and our amazing dev team, we have created Savage Tech, which uh, created the world's first true game fight retention engine. This is not your average retention engine, where you collect some boring points and get some virtual rewards for it. No, we actually created an RPG game that can be put on top of a sports book or onto a casino. And this is how it looks like. On the bottom left, you can see your avatar. So a user signs up for um, your sports book or your casino and then gets encountered with this little guy. This little guy can be dragged and dropped anywhere you want and it works on mobile and it works on desktop. The goal of this guy is to fight against monsters. And you do that by doing something that is good for the operator themselves. For example, placing a bet, um, spinning the virtual machine in the casino or depositing money. We track all of that. And uh, yeah, we give the gamer basically a chance to earn e-fame and give the gamer a chance to progress with his avatar. He grows accustomed to it and uh, yeah, I don't know who has played World of Warcraft amongst you guys, but it's kind of hard to leave your level 30 character behind because this character is non-transferable, which means that there's a huge first mover advantage for an operator in a jurisdiction um, to implement this solution first. We have other cool features uh, built in. For example, we have a social leaderboard. We have a shop where, you, where we can sell virtual items um, um, uh, where, where gamers can check in every 24 hours to get a discount on that legendary sword that they need. And the coolest thing is that uh, we can tap into the loyalty engine of you. So if you say, hey, it, um, someone has to generate a turnover of 250 euro in order to get a voucher, we can actually implement that in our game. And once the person beats the third mini boss, then we can release that voucher to you. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. And I'm looking forward to the questions from the judges. Thank you very much, Tom. Very punctual. I'll start. 
Yes, um, Amor, we're going to start. I to love the yeah, idea of uh, a little angel or devil on your shoulder. The only thing that I have an issue is why can I not take my avatar home? Wouldn't it be more compelling if it were with me on my phone everywhere, just bugging me to do more things in the platform? Absolutely. So the reason for that is because from an operator perspective, you don't want that. You want that the customer has to go back to your platform all the time and only gets to interact with that avatar on your platform because this is the moment in time where you can actually incentivize the user to do something on your book in your casino that actually makes you money. And that's why we stayed away from that. And uh, again, it's a retention engine. We do not want that this character can be transferred from platform A to platform B. So platform A, who signs up with us first, just has that advantage. I want to, are we on? So I suppose this would be essentially a, a kind of VIP program uh, that you could design as an operator. And so you could influence the, the betting behaviors of an individual based on the parameters that you set within your engine, which you're basing on retention and acquisition of, the, of these users. You did say that you've got the, the avatar or the monsters, but if we were to look at an operator level and the branding of a certain operator, let's take a, a bet MGM. They don't want a monster or an alien. They'll probably want something a little bit more fancy. Yeah. So can that intellectual property of that avatar be changed out still with the same mechanics that you've set? Absolutely. So. This is one of the first questions that, that I'm always getting when I'm talking with operators. Yes, anything that you can see on the game layer can be customized to your likening. And that starts with an avatar. It could also be an airplane or a car. It's, it continues with how much money you actually have to bet in order to gain action points, which you can use then to defeat monsters. And of course, it ends with how the monsters are looking. So yeah, everything that you see we customize it for you, so it's really like a solution that looks like it, uh, it came from your platform. Does the operator retain the intellectual property to that avatar, or can you reuse that avatar on someone else's site? Yeah, of course the operator retains their IP. I mean, I cannot think about a solution where we animate a character or a, a mascot from platform A, and then I go out and they, oh, by the way, platform B, would you like also to have that? Uh, I don't think that is going to work. Good. Yeah. Do you have any quantitative analysis of the increase in playing time or revenue from usage of the monsters or the avatars? Yeah, great question. So obviously, we tested this in a dry run with uh, with hundreds of people, uh, from not only from our network, from our network, but also amongst uh, our expanded network. So we know that the game works, um, and we know that it's going to add a lot of fun to the betting experience itself. Um, but um, we are not live yet with our product. We are currently integrating with three different operators, uh, two from Europe, one from LATAM, and after that, and this is exactly what you're looking for, right? Uh, once we have that data and we can match it to the before and after, you know, I just need two numbers that I can blurt out on, on social media and PR. It is basically the average LTV got increased by X after using this solution, and the churn rate got dropped by X percent as well. And I only need those two numbers in order to make my uh, company fly. Yeah. Yes or no question? What's your favorite color? Green. All right. Then. All right. In that case, I'm going to use the last seven seconds. Thank you very much to Sigma Asia for providing us startups with this amazing facility. Thanks. And thanks again. Thank you very, very much, Tom. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, Tom. So that was Savage Tech, everybody. So what's going to happen next is we're going to vote and we're going to count our votes. And during, our, um, uh, during the, the, the counting of the votes, we have a video from a startup pitch that did not actually make it to Manila. So instead, we're going to play it on, on screen, just at least to honor them for, 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 um, uh, for enlisting with us, you know, it's just a gesture of goodwill we'd like to show out. Hello, my name is Will Martin, and I'm the founder of LiveDuel, a decentralized sports exchange. So Betfair and others have proven that the betting exchange model works, but they have key issues that limit their growth and scalability. The abundance of options on display to end users is just overwhelming for them. And they don't understand what's actually going on. 
18 prices on display is just too much information to take in. On the liquidity provision side, it's even more complicated. And this hinders the average user from participating. These two issues combined severely limit the growth and scalability of betting exchanges to the masses. So that's where LiveDuel comes in. You can view us as a hybrid between a sports book and a betting exchange. On the front end, we look and operate more like a sports book. We have just three prices on display for your typical Premier League match. Home team, away team, and draw. But on the back end, we operate more like an exchange. We use automated liquidity provision to streamline both the process of adding liquidity to a market and also in the matchmaking with end users placing bets. So we want to build a global, scalable liquidity pool because 10,000 operators having 10,000 liquidity pools just guarantees inefficiency. This liquidity pool, in essence, replaces the bankroll of the house so that we can facilitate instant transactions to deliver the best possible user experience. Our business model is a transaction fee model. So we charge 4% per transaction, a portion of which goes back to the liquidity providers so we can incentivize their participation. With token governance, we can change how this is distributed over the course of time along with our community. So we can incentivize different types of users. We can change it to attract new users, to retain users, or to reward our affiliates. So let's take a look at the end user flow. Users can select some upcoming games, select which game is most interesting to them, select which option that they want to bet on, confirm their bet, and now they can watch the stats coming in in real time along with the price impact it has on their bets. They can cash out or double down at any time. For the liquidity provider side, you can select which market you want to add liquidity to, select how much you want to stake, confirm your transactions, and our algorithms will match your stake in the market. So the market opportunity is clear. There's going to be more than a doubling of the market by the end of the decade. And this is the team behind LiveJewel. So I'm Will Martin, CEO and founder of LiveJewel and an ex-futures trader. I also have over 10 years experience in sports betting and I was on the product team at Beats by Dre. Alexander is our CTO and a senior developer at Cardano as well as Moon Gaming. He's a front-end specialist in Web3. Laura is our head of product and design. She spent six years as lead designer at SofaScore and was designing for over 20 million monthly active users. And she also has three years experience in UI UX in Web3. So thank you for taking the time to take a look. If you want to reach out, you can email me at will at livejewel.com or you can book. Okay, that was live duel, everybody. Look them up online. I'm pretty sure it will be very, very interesting for everyone. Matthew, how's it looking? Anticipation. Can I get some comments from the judges, though? Amor, what did you think about this, this one, this, this startup pitch this time around? Um, I've been quite vocal in terms of whether it be fintech or gaming, anything that causes mass adoption uh, of a technology is what earns my votes. So the one platform that makes others' platforms gets my vote there. All right. <laughs> David. I'm all for someone who can articulate a quantitative value to exceed what they're asking for. And I was very impressed by the business models and the design, et cetera. I'm just always a little bit disappointed when I don't have an ask. <laughs> so I'd love, <laughs> I love people to ask. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, I, I, I like the, uh, the use of data. Um, I believe our market is uh, very reliant on data uh, and the guys that go after that data and understand that data are going to win. Uh, just co one comment on the actual presentations. Um, for all the guys, it is much better if you put three bullet points per slide because having little tiny writing there makes it really hard for everyone to read. So it'd be good just to have 
some graphics and big bullet points in your slides. Take notes, please. <laughs> Owen. Um, I, I agree with everybody on, on, on stage here. I think, you know, even what David said, the quantitative and qualitative data sets to, to help paint the picture for us. I, I think what most entrepreneurs don't do uh, is think about the clarity equaling conversion. The clearer you are and the more articulate you are with what you're selling and who you're selling it to, that's how you get the money. Whether it's a customer, whether it's an investor, whether it's whatever. So the I why. think more clarity, clearer slides, but just understanding who you're talking to so that you get that conversion. Thank you very much. I, I hope the, the pitchers took note of this and future pitchers that will come to the startup pitch here at Sigma, whether it's in Manila or in Brazil or in Cape Town or in Malta or in Budapest. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually have the results over here. I have this one. Oh, it's heavy. I gave so many out yesterday and I, I, still can't, I, I still can't believe how heavy they are. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome on stage the winner of the startup pitch. You voted. We counted. Blask. Congratulations. You. Would you like to say something? I really would like to say thank you because for me, the thing is really heavy. That's what I like to say. And it means the world to me when more and more people in iGaming start to trust in what things we are doing. Because I'll say one more again, we are not playing anyone's game. We are creating our own. A very well done to Blask. I would like to ask you to remain here, Max, so we can have a group photo, which will be going up on our socials very soon. I would turn that around if I were you. <laughs> so let's get her up.